All right, good evening, good evening, everybody. And now we're gonna talk about competition. Uh, as you can see behind me here, we have our new TEK 8.11b. The student will investigate how organisms and populations in an ecosystem depend on and may compete for biotic and abiotic factors such as quantity of light, water, range of temperatures, or soil composition. Now, these things we discussed in class. Uh, an ecosystem consists of all biotic and abiotic factors in any particular environment. As you remember, biotic factors are everything living, and abiotic factors are everything non-living. Biotic factors include things like plants, animals, fungi, microorganisms, everything that has life or once had life. Bio means life. Things like producers, things like decomposers, things like cows. Everything that was living or was once living is a biotic factor. A, biotic factors are of course the opposite. Air, water, soil, sources of energy, the humidity, anything like that. Abiotic of course means not, not living. Uh, for example, uh, energy, the sun, stones, dirt, all that stuff which was never living. All right, that we covered in class. Here's the new stuff. The definitions for habitat and niches. Uh, some people pronounce it niches. I prefer niches. Um, a habitat is any environment where a population or a species regularly lives. Uh, you don't often find polar bears outside of the Arctic, and you don't often find the desert kangaroo rat outside of the desert. It deals with its physical and biotic environment. What kind of vegetation will you find there? What kind of tree coverage will you find there? What kind of temperature will you find there? All that good stuff. And, and uh, you usually find animals in the same basic kind of habitat, or any organism really. And habitats can be divided into zones. You can even have microhabitats. Uh, microhabitats meaning like if you have like layers of soil, it's like what kind of bugs live in the top soil versus what kind of worms live in the lower soil. Uh, rainforests are especially good at that. It's like what kind of animals live in the tops of the trees versus what kind of animals lives in the bottom of the trees. And though the habitat may be one rainforest, you still get loads and loads of what's called microhabitats. And I'm talking like even even down to like little square inches of plants. It's like what kind of bugs live right here. And behind me you have a whole lot of examples of microhabitats. Now a niche is the role that a species plays in its community. What kind of space does it occupy? What does it eat? What does it need to reproduce? When can you find it in this community? What role does it play? I eat this. I live in this community from winter to fall. I need a lot of space to reproduce because I'm a big old wolf or something like that. What role does a species play in its community? Now, here's where we get to the fun stuff. This is where competition comes in. We've talked about feeding relationships, predators and prey, uh, herbivores, producers and consumers, parasites and hosts, mutual relationships, all that kind of good stuff. But what happens when two species want exactly the same thing? Then you're looking at competition. And competition is where nature gets particularly vicious. You will find very few niches that are big enough to sustain two kinds of species. If you have species A that lives in this area and eats this kind of food, and species B that lives in this area and eats this kind of food, one of them is going to have to be driven off. If you have two species occupying the same niche, one species must go. Case in point. Squirrels in Britain. This is an adorable little red squirrel. It is native to Britain and its population has declined over about the last hundred years due to competitive exclusion, uh, disease, and the loss of forests. Not too long ago, within the last hundred years, we had this little guy introduced, the gray squirrel. He is the invasive species and he is the alien. Uh, between 1876 and 1929, you had this little guy introduced to Britain in about 30 sites. It took over. The red squirrel's niche was well and proper occupied. The gray squirrel came in and said, hey, I'm better at taking over all your stuff, and it ran the poor little guy out. Here's what the distribution of squirrels in Britain looks like today. All right, check this out. Here is Britain. And all these little spots are where you find the red squirrel these days. Okay, you ready for this? Here, 
or where you find the gray squirrel these days. That's right. The gray squirrel might be the foreign species, but it was the victor in this case. Okay, for this little lecture, remember two things. Habit, oh, I'm sorry, three things. Habitat, niche, and competition. All right, see you all in class. Have a good one.